uh, Mount Mercy College that you're in manufacturing. None of my friends are going to manufacturing. They're all selling insurance and stuff like that. So it's a little, little, little bit different. Talk about briefly about this technology, so just a one slide overview. Um, my mother and father started the company in 1996, started off with SLA. Um, we developed into Polyjet FDM technologies, which uh, led us into our customers wanting uh, more quantities, more functional parts. So we got into rapid tooling using high speed milling applications. And then from there, if you're making the tools, why not sample them and shoot them? So we got uh, injection bullet presses in house. Um, we're using horizontal presses, shoot multiple materials uh, for inspection. We look at going ISO certification in the first quarter of 2010. We have a CMM and also optical comparator in house. One of the things Jeff and I have, have, have presented before with similar slides talk about product trends. We have 1,600 customers. We, we have a variety of, of, of niches that we, that we cater to. But this is the things that, that we're seeing. And going to the, like the last slide there, the last part is product cannibalization. Especially medical in this region, we work with customers that literally are saying, all right, go here, I need 5,000 parts for two years, or 5,000 parts a year for two or three years, because we already developed the next part that's going to cannibalize what we currently are going to export out there. And so this is the stuff that we're seeing is, is people already have, uh, it's no longer the 10-year, 20-year plan. It's the one-year, two-year, three, five-year plans that we're seeing religiously. And the thing talking about lower volume but higher margin products. Uh, I look at uh, if you have an iPod or, a, or a, 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 a something that you listen like a head, uh, headphones, you can go and buy a headset for $8. One size fits all, $8. It's a great deal. You can get one custom to your ear for $150. Well, let me tell you, they're making a lot more money in selling you a headset for $150 than they are for eight, but they're not selling as many of those. So we're going to talk about lower volumes but higher margins on those. And a lot of the products are heading that way. We call it mass customization. Everybody wants it custom. Uh, Jeff also talks about the three different um, areas of tracking. You'll notice there's very little overlap of any. But you bring that to today, huge overlap. Because technologies that have improved with the efficiencies, with the tolerance, with the materials, are be able to use in production, as Jeff stated, in direct digital uh, manufacturing. Here's a quote for today. Every injection molder who intends to stay in business must continually ask himself, what must I do to run as fast and efficiently as possible and still meet the customer's quality requirements? What great words for today, but they were spoken back in 1988. That was taken from a quote from Moldmaking and Technology Magazine. So even back in 88, how can we do it faster? How can we do it better but still maintain the quality today? So what that did, that sends a fury of um, rapid tooling applications. So let's take a walk down memory lane. I just picked on 1997 because that's when seeing a lot of the stuff was really coming to fruition. There was four categories um, that, that was deemed as rapid tooling. One of the issues that I have in, in the terminology if I try to sell a production buyer a prototype tool, right away here she says, I don't buy prototypes. If I go to a prototype, bu a prototype buyer and say, I'd like to sell you parts from a low volume production tool, I can't buy production parts. So we have all these ten terms of aluminum tooling, soft tooling, rapid tooling, bridge tooling, stuff like that. But here are some applications from direct aim, Kell tool, epoxy tool, and, S and SLS laser form tooling that really was the four corner pieces that was deemed as rapid tooling. Curiosity, how many people have tried one of these technologies for a, a, a method of tooling? Show of hands. A couple. How many have tried two of these technologies? Show of hands. Three? Oh, we got a brave person in the middle. Have we tried all four of these in the past? Nobody tried, nobody tried all four. Well, the problem with it is they all worked but they're very niche specific. You take direct aim, you can get 50 parts out of ABS, no doubt. But now you wanna make a modification, start over. You want to um, shoot more parts, can't handle, can't handle the quantities. You wanna shoot a glass filled material, can't handle that. So a Kell tool. Kell tool, you could guarantee to get two million parts off a of Kell tool. It was fantastic. But slightly missing was a thing called tolerance. And so if you wanted a part that had great detail, but very low tolerance, it was perfect for you. So it worked great for toy manufacturers. If you want to make a toy, this was your application. But if you want to make anything that fit, 
it didn't work so well. You have applications in, in epoxy tooling and laser, um, laser form, again, work very niche. La um, epoxy tooling uh, worked average for 100 parts. Uh, laser form, you get multiple parts, but it's hard to modify. It was, uh, you didn't get a very good service finish. The tolerance w w was not there. So what happened with that curate? That create all these myths about rapid tooling. Everybody was sour. The gentleman that tried three of those in the past probably didn't think it was awesome. You know, and so they all said, oh, that rapid tooling is garbage, it doesn't work. So all of a sudden you hear these things, you can't run high volumes, you can't make tool mods, you can't shoot clear parts, you can't, 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 can't. Throw it out, rapid tooling's terrible. Well, let's talk about today's rapid tooling. We're talking about high speed milling capabilities, running at 40,000, between 30 and 40,000 RPMs. We're using 775 or a 7,000 series aluminum mold inserts. These tools have legit cooling, heating, full ejection, and mention uh, small cutters. This is a 0.3 millimeter size cutter. So it's a 12 thou cutter, extend out of 150 thousandths. You can run high volumes. These are some success stories of parts off the loom. 40,000 parts, 10,000 parts, 40, 20, 15,000 parts. These are getting. Now again, this is high volume is a relative term. This is a low volume production seminar. Well, again, how many, some of you guys might think that 40,000 parts is low volume production. A lot of people say 40,000 parts, I could retire if I sold that many parts in a year. So that's, every product is, is different, is unique. So we have to kind of make sure we, we tailor that to what is um, high volume and low volume if there is. The, the area is so gray now where that has become. That's why it's, it's good for, for discussion. Tool modifications. No matter what happens, ten out of ten, or 6 out of 10 tools that, that we make need to be modified. Um, this, the customer is always right. They design a part with very thick sections. Uh, Tom is in here, tooling manager. He warned them, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to kind of teeter like a totter, it's going to be with the thick sections, you get warping. No, Tom, it's a two-inch part, it's glass or nylon, it'll be fine. No, the part wasn't fine. We had the thick sections, it warped, so we went back in and cored it out. But it gives you capabilities of doing that. Again, these tools can be welded on, remachined, polished, textured, inserted, a variety of things. So you're not, you're not stuck from that standpoint. Again, Tom, it's on the service finish, translucent parts, transparent parts, clear parts. You can get there. Now, you, I'll let you know you can't get to an A1 service finish because as soon as you shoot plastic into it, it dulls it down. A2, A3, not an issue. So there is, there is, some, there is uh, some ways of getting cosmetic parts or functional parts. This here is actually a polished dome, like a microscope, uh, a lens to help um, enlarge uh, the, the, laser, or the laser marking or pad printing on those parts, and you have a light pipe that's functional from aluminum tools. And it's not just functional. People aren't just using the aluminum tooling or, or the rapid tooling for just to get functional parts, but these are legitimately cosmetic parts that are in the fields. Here's some components that are run off of aluminum tools with a, a texture or a polish, with decoration. These are functional and they are for end result. You can be, you know, buy these parts in stores. You can shoot large parts. Toro, 15 and a half inches, is that large? Probably not. Kimberly Sanderson from Medtronic, is that large? Yes. Really large, she says. Yeah, again, it's a relative term. So, but out of the aluminum, and there's a slide lower, or down, down in the presentation, it's even larger than this. But again, on average, these are some of the parts. We're, we're not seeing a huge trend to go larger than that. In the reality, you're not saving that much money by the time you get bigger molds in. You can't handle them as, as well with all, all, the, all the other auxiliary equipment. To, to move them around, die cart, stuff like that. But these are parts have come from aluminum tool. Here's just a, 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 neat, a neat slide that I like. It talks about capturing undercuts. So what this is here, animation that we actually made for ourselves to let our tool, uh, our um, press operator to know, hey, how are all these parts, are, how are we gonna pull these parts out? But we have one, <clears throat> two, three, four, five, six, applications, six movements to have that part released from the tool. So this is the actual plastic part the customer wants. These are all the pickouts that we're using, hand pickouts, manual slides, and capsules undercuts. Now, would you want us at the press running a million of these? Absolutely not. I think this is a two minute cycle time. But for 300, that's an amazing way to go. They see it a ton of money. Uh, uh, an estimation I've heard, this tool could be anywhere from 120,000 to $300,000, depending on how you automate it, stuff like that. I think this tool was $18,000.